uh, the protection against antioxidants, the replacement of beef with plant alternatives is a really good idea. Okay, uh, what about, th this was for individual, uh, you know, this and this and this, uh, they, they were all individual uh, nutrients. Like uh, here it's uh, beta carotene, here it's uh, uh, phytosterols, here it's uh, um, uh, fiber, et cetera. A and here it's those other uh, uh, nutrients. But what about whole diets? We are not really um, lab rats responding to, you know, in a mechanistic one-to-one -one way, uh, add this, reduce that. Uh, we are a little more complex than that. So let's look at epidemiology. And this is um, from uh, th this paper uh, that Aviva Musicus uh, uh, wrote in 22. I I'm a co-author here. And basically what she did is she, again, uh, she divided a, pop a very large population, something like uh, two and a half, almost three million person years of follow-up. Uh, she divided them according to, um, to um, uh, the degree to which their diet, as they reported it to be, the degree to which this diet resembles or is different from this thing that we show here called AHI. Okay, AHI stands for um, Alternative uh, Healthy Eating Index. Okay, so again, you take all this two and a half, three million person year population, you divide it over here uh, is the fifth of the population that eats um, the least like AHI, and this is the uh, fifth that eats the most like Ahi. And okay, so the, the most vulnerable or, or worst diet group is the reference, okay? And we compare uh, cardiovascular disease, disease risk in other uh, quintiles or quartiles relative to the risk of the, uh, uh, the group of the people who eat as differently from AHI as possible. And you see a, a nice uh, dose response kind of uh, behavior. The closer your diet is to AHI, and that means basically plant-based diet and no red meat to speak of, uh, the, the lower are your uh, cardiovascular disease uh, risks. And not by a little. If this is 100, then the risks uh, of these guys can be something like 75, but they can be as low as 65. So a very significant protection is afforded by eating as closely as possible to the alternative healthy eating index. But here's an interesting one. I told you earlier, you don't need to have a soul searching kind of um, self introspection. Oh, what do I do? Do I uh, favor planetary health or do I favor my own health? No, um, because here these people ate the way they wanted to eat. And here we just divided them according to how uh, close to or different from the AI uh, eating pattern their diet happened to, to be. But here we show the emissions of these people's diet, and that is in kilogram uh, of CO2 per person per day. And you see that you uh, the worst, or, or the people who eat the diet that is as different from AHI as possible, shown here, have emissions of something like uh, 3.578 uh, kilogram uh, CO2 equivalent per person per day. The people who eat uh, as close to AHI as possible have something like 2.6. So a very significant reduction. That's the beauty. And going beyond cardiovascular disease, here, here, here are the, uh, are the, um, uh, the odds of either 
uh, uh, over here you see incidents of various unfortunate events, and here is the mortality uh, rate, and uh, along here you see the risk ratio uh, for the enumerated uh, incidences or uh, outcomes or, or causes of death. So cancer, for example, okay, not really clear. Yes, this the average is lower than one, meaning uh, you get some protection, but the uncertainty range includes both signs, uh, both sides of one, so that's not so great. But here's coronary heart, oh, oh not so, it's not so great, it's not clear, okay? Coronary heart disease, the uncertainty range is nowhere near one, uh, what is it? Well, it's between about 0.6 and 0.75. Okay, so you reduce your odds of uh, suffering from a coronary heart disease incidence by somewhere uh, between uh, 25 and 40 percent. Stroke, a little less. Here it is, but still pretty good. Type 2 diabetes, very significant protection. What about total mortality? Very much reduced uh, in the group that eats uh, as close as possible to ahi. All cancer right here, excluding one, meaning emphatic protection. Cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, neurodegenerative disease, you know, uh, uh, MS or, or ALS or one of those. Um, things we really want to stay as far away from as we possibly can. Um, well, there is no vaccine as far as I know uh, yet for MS, but what this is showing you that is that eating as close to AHI as possible is as close to an effective vaccine as, as we currently have. Good. Um, here, uh, and this is uh, from a different paper by Pan et al. Uh, also, a really, uh, it's a bit old, but it's a great, great paper. And um, and um, oh, I wish I could hide this. Let's see. Can I hide? Yes. How about that? Nope. Um, well, all right. I guess I'll have to live with it. Okay. Um, uh, anyways, oops, sorry. Uh, here we go. Okay, so on the horizontal axis, total red meat in intake, okay, in servings per day, from zero on the left to four on the right, and uh, the vertical axis, uh, hazard ratio uh, for, uh, for um, uh, total mortality, okay, uh, a, a, as a function of uh, total red meat intake. It's very clear, isn't it? Uh, that if you define the hazard of the group that eats no red meat as one, these people have a certain risk and you call that one. Well, the people who have uh, three and a half servings of red meat a day have something like 1.8, meaning they're 80 percent more. Uh, 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 their hazard is 80 percent higher. Okay, and uh, panel B is the same idea, just for a different cohort. Uh, the upper one is for the health professional follow-up study, uh, and you see here it's only men, and it's, uh, it's, it's something like 51, 52,000 men. Uh, the panel B is both uh, sexes and uh, many more people, about threefold uh, or so more. Um, same result. So panel B essentially corroborates what panel uh, it corroborates for both sexes what panel A said for uh, it showed for men only. Okay, um, is a similar result for from a different paper uh, for pancreatic cancer. Um, so on the horizontal axis is healthful 
plant-based diet index, okay? So the further to the right you are, the, the, the better uh, your plant-based diet is. And the, the result is clear. The further to the right you are, the lower your hazard um, uh, for pancreatic cancer, another uh, adversary we wish to stay on the positive side of. Um, yeah, uh, and the lower panel shows you essentially the inverse of that. Um, remember I said earlier, you can be vegan and cause significant damage to yourself. Do you see how if you choose really poorly your vegan food, in other words, you're in, in the somewhere around here, you really can raise your uh, hazard, in this case for pancreatic cancer, but this generalizes to almost uh, any one of the diseases that we looked at earlier. So in other words, um, being vegan just by itself uh, is a good start, but it's far from enough. You really need to know what you're doing. Don't just... Uh, don't try it at home. Well, do try it at home, but not without some consultation and with the right authorities, not with some, you know, fad diet uh, guru rack. Um, okay, so, um, uh, right. Uh, okay, I want to do this for a second. Okay, so uh, so so here uh, from this Wang et al. paper, uh, the hazard ratio ratio of total mortality, okay, um, as uh, a function of plant based diet index, and there are different types. Okay, UPDI is the unhealthful plant based diet index. Hell HPDI, so UPDI is here, HPDI is here, that is the healthful plants, plant based diet index. And uh, never mind the other, it's, not, it's just kind of an in but or, or joint uh, agglomeration, it's not that interesting. Uh, this is interesting, okay? So again, if you are a clueless vegan willy-nilly embarking on a plant-based diet, but one that is very poorly designed, you can seriously undermine your health. And here you see that with the hazard ratio for total mortality. The more of this uh, poorly designed diet you eat, the higher your hazard. On the other hand, if you do the right thing, the more of that you eat, the better off you are. Now, don't think that the difference between here and here, which is the difference between undermining your health here or improving your health here. Don't think that this requires four PhDs in you know biochemistry, epidemiology, uh, you name it. No, <laughs> it's uh, you need to read. Um, I would say two books, okay? Read two books. Read David Katz and uh, Mark Bittman, a uh, book on what to eat or whatever the hell they call it, and read Walter Willett's Oldie but Goldie on, uh, you know, eat, drink, and be healthy, I think it's called. Um, even the Willett one, which is a bit outdated, still has effectively everything to the bleeding edge that you need to know in order to be emphatically here and avoiding with equal emphasis this.